കരുണാർണവമായി കരുതഗതി നൽകും അരുണാചല ശിവം നമസ്തെ So I want to clear up a persistent misunderstanding that I notice in many of the comments and in my interactions with people in teaching situations. And that is the difference between the masculine path and the feminine path. You know in the kula Uh, which is what the, the name of the Kaula path of Tantra comes from, the Kula. Kula means the path. Huh? It actually means the home. The home of what? Home of Kundalini. So where is the home of Kundalini? In the spine. And the spine has two, actually three channels. The Ida, the pingala and the shushumna the ida is generally considered the male path the pingala is the feminine path and the shushumna is the balanced the third path now enlightenment happens when all the blocks which are known as knots or grantis that stop the kundalini from rising when these are removed and how are they removed by sadhana so what kind of sadhana well there are basically two different styles the masculine and the feminine the masculine tries to advance along the ida channel the left hand channel and the feminine advances along the pingala the right hand channel now some of you have heard the expression left hand path what it actually means is the masculine path the male path philosophically this is known as via positiva via positiva is an old theological term which means that god and the path on the way to god are stated in positivistic language positive means this exists that exists and you are the doer and you have to do this and do that i think maybe 90% or more of the so called spiritual path or techniques given in public like on the internet are of this mood of this flavor huh you're the doer you're responsible for getting enlightened you have to attain huh enlightenment that word attained <laughs> it means action it means doing and that means there's a doer and so this is overall the mood of yoga yoga although it means joining how does it join by an effort of will by doing some work i've even used this concept in many of my talks because it's really the only thing that most people can understand but then you have the feminine path the feminine path is of surrender not being the doer but being the reception of the benedictions given by the higher authorities and this is actually how the higher stages of the path manifest i've often said here that meditation is not something that you do it's something that happens when you are qualified what is qualified mean it means you've purified the ego the false ego and what is false ego the sense that i am the doer so the more you think that you are the doer the more you think that you have to make an effort to attain spiritual progress the more you are caught up in illusion and the harder and harder it is 
to make any actual spiritual advancement. Now, there's actual tangible spiritual advancement. That's one thing. Then there's spiritual theater. <laughs> you know, just like security theater at the airports, right? They never actually catch anybody. Even when people test them, you know, to, to see if they're on the ball, 99% of the time they miss the fake bomb or whatever, gun or whatever they're smuggling in. So it's not really real security, it's security theater. And there's something similar in spiritual life. It's not real yoga, it's not real meditation, it's meditation theater. People pretend to meditate. Huh? They can get really good at it. I've seen people sit there for hours and pretend to meditate. <laughs> but meditation is not something you can do because there has to be a doer. And it's precisely the doer or the ego that is in the way of actual meditation happening. So, the feminine path is the path of surrender. It means to submit to spiritual authority and to rely on the higher authorities to grant the higher stages of the path. Because it's not something you can do. Huh? Look at the limitations of our doing, the limitations of our will. Huh? We cannot beat our own heart. We cannot digest our own food. We cannot balance our own endocrine system. We cannot make our brain cells work. Uh, we don't do any of those things. We can't. There are strict limitations on our ability to do things, even with our own body. So what to speak of spiritual things? There isn't a whole lot we can actually do except to follow the instructions in the scriptures for self-purification. And then surrender, surrender to the guru, the external guru and the internal guru. Surrender to the instructions in the scriptures, in the Shastra. Surrender to the path that begins with karma yoga and then advances to bhakti yoga, which is also a spontaneous thing that just happens when you do the sadhana, when you follow the rules of the scriptures. And then when bhakti matures, meditation happens automatically. This is what happened to me. See, I'm not just speaking like from my imagination. It's not something I'm doing. I'm just sitting here and taking breaths and then the words come out, and I'm not even sure what I'm going to say. <laughs> but somehow I'm being guided by higher intelligence. So this is the thing. And I'll give you a good example. Huh? When people try to do meditation, they have to work very hard at it. And even then, their progress is very spotty, you know. Sometimes they have good days and bad days and so on like that. For me, it was never like that. Because I had spent the previous 25 years serving my guru and doing karma yoga and bhakti yoga, when I finally sat down to do serious meditation, I just sat there. I didn't do anything. <laughs> it's not like I was following some technique, but it just happened. And I had all the symptoms of Kundalini rising huh? without any distress, without any fear, without any problems. Steadily, day after day, she was rising higher and higher. And I was having all the symptoms, of not of any kind of suffering, but expanded awareness until finally I realized Brahman. Now, the funny thing is, I had realized Brahman years before, actually, on an acid trip in 1967. But I buried it. I buried the memory of that experience because 
I had no framework to understand it or explain it even to myself. So then when I experienced Brahman again, I saw Brahman penetrating the world and I saw the world in Brahman. Huh? Brahman in the world and the world in Brahman. It was wonderful and such a bliss. Oh, and it lasted for days and weeks, you know. It was great. But really, it rekindled that original experience, and it also gave me a very strong desire to understand this path of Brahman and what is Brahman, really, and so on. And so I started researching, and it took me 33 years. After 1984, it took me 33 years to fully understand what had happened to me, and that was by the grace of my Buddhist teacher, Jnananda Bhikkhu. So anyway, if you can follow the instructions in the scriptures and do the different practices as recommended, you don't have to worry about doing meditation. Meditation will just happen spontaneously. And you will also get the result very quickly. It only took me about six weeks. So success in meditation is dependent on the prerequisites. And everybody these days is in such a hurry, they want to skip the prerequisites and go right to the thing. Huh? It doesn't work. There is no shortcut. You can't cheat God. You have to follow the instructions in the scriptures. But who even reads the scriptures? Ramana Maharshi is talking about this, and he says, the present difficulty is that man thinks that he is the doer, but it is a mistake. It is the higher power which does everything, and the man is only a tool. If he accepts that position, he is free from troubles. Otherwise, he courts them. Take, for instance, the figure in a Gopuram, temple tower, where it is made to appear to bear the burden of the tower on its shoulders. Its posture and look are a picture of great strain while bearing the very heavy burden of the tower. But think, the tower is built on the earth and it rests on its foundation. The figure, like Atlas bearing the earth, is a part of the tower, but is it made to look as if it bore the tower? Is it not funny? So is the man who takes on himself the sense of doing. So if you're the doer, you're responsible. And if you don't get any results, which you won't because you got this big ego in the way, then that is your fault. And you have to bear that fault it's a great burden. So instead, there's another story by Ramana where he says, when you go on a train, you take your luggage, maybe you're carrying your luggage, you know? So when you get on the train, you take your luggage and you put it in the luggage rack. Let the train bear your luggage. You don't sit there on the seat with your, with your bag on your shoulder. And it's the same with spiritual life. You don't have to be the doer. You don't have to make anything happen. You can take the feminine path and surrender and let God, the higher power, give you the result free of charge. <laughs> All you have to do is follow the instructions. Is that so hard? Well, it appears that it is hard for many people. And when I find someone being obdurately masculine, on this channel or in my private classes, I do everything possible to get rid of them because they're only going to be trouble for themselves and for me. And ultimately, they're going to make offenses and that's going to uh, be very problematic for their whole life. So it's better for me to break contact with them than allow them to make offenses and then bear an even heavier burden of karma in the future, because as the doer, they're responsible. <laughs> so anyway, 
The best thing is to just surrender, follow the feminine path, and then all will be well. Aum Tetsa. Aum Shakti Aum.